Hey filmmakers, Shun here. This video we are covering the basics of a screenplay format. First of all, you don't need to have a script software and any writing program can be used. Personally, I use Google Docs because it's free and it's easy to share the files to the cast and crew in different formats. But also you can work on it on your phone using Google Docs app and it auto syncs so you can easily open it on your laptop or tablet and keep on writing. So why is script formatting so important? It's mainly to make it easier to understand the script without needing to learn a new format every time. Especially if everybody does it in their own way, it will get very confusing very fast. But also a script is more than just having the dialogue and action for the director and actors to follow. The main important thing is a guideline for the entire crew to work on. As the information given can be used to prepare locations, props, equipment and more. The first thing we are going to set is the font, which is Courier New. You might have heard of people using Courier Regular as a screenplay font, but they are the same font. The Courier Regular is the older version which is non-scalable and also will pixelate when upscaled. And most computers don't have it pre-installed, while well, Courier New is. And the font size that we are going to set is 12 points. Now we are going to add page numbers. We are going to insert then to the page numbers and then we choose top right. Then go to the options and turn off show on first page. Now we add indent tab stops. Hover your mouse on the ruler on top and at 0.5 we right mouse click and choose add left tab stop. And we also add them at 1 and also at 2.19. Now we can finally start typing. The first page is the title page. There isn't really a standard layout for this but most have the title of the movie and then under it say screenplay by or written by then with the names of who have worked on the script. And on the bottom of the title page we have our contact info. We have our phone number and email and of course this is for anybody who have read your script or you have sent to know who to contact or how to contact you. Now to the actual first page of the script. We start the script with a transition. We align it to the right and here we type in all caps black screen or fade in. This is basically the transition to start your movie, either just a straight cut from black or we fade in from black to the first shot of your movie. We will talk more about transitions later and now to the first scene. We go to the next row where we type in the number 1. This shows the scene numbering so it's easier to find the correct scene faster. Then we hit the tap stop to go to 0.5 tap stop. So we can add the slug line or header, as this can be used to quickly determine when and where the scene is taking place. We start the slug line with either EXT or INT standing for exterior for outdoor location or interior for indoor location. Then we write the name of the location being specific on which street it is or even specify what kind of room you want the scene to happen. Then we can write it if it's a day or night scene. The scene heading or slug line is also very useful for planning the production schedule. Next row also starting at 0.5 tap stop we have the actions. Just write clear instructions of what you want to see happening with the least amount of words. You really don't need to explain too much but just clear precise action beats that need to happen in the scene. Also, if the actors interact with an item, you should write it down so the prop department know when they need to get something ahead of time. Also, we can specify the gender and age of the characters the first time we encounter them in the script. This makes it easier for the casting to search for the specific actors, but also for the person reading the script to understand what kind of characters they are. Now something that not every scriptwriter adds, which is the shot directions. These are written in full caps at 0.5 tap stop. These are camera angles, camera movements and framing information. 
I personally add them as I already envision the scene while I'm writing the script and also tell a story with the camera. This also makes it easier for the DP as this acts as a kind of short list in the script. Now we get to the dialogue section. First we write the name of the character who will be speaking. This starts at the 2.19 tap stop. Behind it in rounded bracket we can specify if it's a continuation of a dialogue that got split up by an action or something else. There's also a VO for voiceovers and OS for off screen. Then optional under the name we can add another rounded bracket for a small direction of speech. For example like whispering, loudly, out of breath or any emotions you want the dialogue to convey. Then we have the actual dialogue which starts at the one tap stop. Only special to add in rounded brackets it's in the middle of the dialogue if you want to give a direction to change the emotion or add a pause. Now let's get back to the transitions on the right side of the page. These are often rarely included in the scripts, but still it's useful to know. These are often just quick wording of transitions like cut to, wipe to and more. These of course during the production or filming will be used to make sure to film the shot for the transition and for the post production to know when they need to edit in a transition at which point. If you want to time jump within a scene you can add a same scene later instead of writing another slug line with a later time. Another thing you won't often see in scripts are the title cards. These are written on the left side at the 0.5 tap stop. We indicate them with either over black or over a color or over a footage and under it specified which footage. Then under that you write the title that you need. These are often used for showing the title of the movie or indicating a change of time or change of location. And if you want to script the opening with credits or also the end credits. The next is useful if you are scripting a montage. This is marking the beginning and the end of the montage as montages are often quick shots with different locations and if you don't mark them the script might seem like it has several scenes written with missing dialogue. So marking the beginning and the end of the montage the reader will understand that it's purposely written as a montage. Now to close off the script we indicate it with the end at the 2.19 tap stop or centered to the page. If there are any questions about scripting please leave it in the comment section here below. Also don't forget to SLS share like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.